And I want to now move just to think about some violent individuals. Um, and this, I want to talk now about some young, about violent young men. And this is, a, a, and I'm going to talk about a study in Florida. Um, and these are the unhappy young men who were the uh, study um, here. And this was looking at the degree of adverse childhood experience that these young men had experienced. So um, this, the, the methodology for the study is based on some very interesting work that's been going on for about 20 years now by a group called the Kaiser Permanente Health Management Organization, who are a big HMO in the States. And about 20 years ago, they decided they wanted to try and understand why some people were very heavy users of their services. And what they did was to take a sample of 17,000 of the men and women who use their services. And they asked them about their early childhoods and about the degree of adversity they'd suffered. And what they discovered was that there were very high levels of childhood adversity amongst the people who were most frequent attenders at the health management organization, who were most frequent users of services. And this is really, and this is a, a slide which just shows you the difference. So the blue bars are the Kaiser Permanente group. So you can see that quite a lot of people had no ad childhood adversity at all. Although interestingly, you know, 35, only 35% of people had no childhood adversity, which is quite interesting if you think about it. And then this group of people had just had one type of childhood adversity. And, I'm, and if you want to know what we're talking about, we're talking about divorce, we're talking about poverty, <coughs> we're talking about uh, physical types of abuse, we're talking about serious violence within the home, those sorts of, uh, of disadvantage, you know, any things that you would think about disadvantageous. Here we are with these, about the same groups had two, but here are the juvenile offenders in, um, in the Florida prison. And 50% of them had had four or more different types of childhood adversity, considerably more than, than, the, gen than the general population in the Kaiser Permanente group. That is a considerable number and, of course, very different. Compare this bar with these people, almost hardly any of the offenders had had no childhood adversity at all. And I flag this up because, again, if we're thinking from the top down about the governmental influence on inequality and utilitarian reasoning, and the bottom up from individual vulnerabilities, then somehow, but at all points in between, we need to be thinking about violence risk. And this is just another study showing something which is showing rather similar. But if I just show you now really what the, the adverse, the way that the method, the way that adverse child experience might impact. Um, and what the current best guess that we have at present is that childhood adversity of these various types has a big influence on the development of neural pathways, particularly in the frontal lobes. And the, front, the frontal executive um, is part of the brain um, that was, we know is most involved in terms of our sense of agency and our sense of choice and our sense of responsibility and indeed our, our social brain. Um, and I will be saying a bit more about that when we next meet. But what we think, of course, is that if you have that type of early neuron disruption of neurodevelopment in your first five years or so, then that has an impact on your social, emotional and cognitive impairment because you're going to go into school with difficulties. And if you can't get into school and stay in school, that's going to seriously disadvantage you. But also this is a group of people who then adopt health risk behaviours, particularly smoking and drinking and illicit drug use. And that then leads to disease and disability and social problems. And it's very clear that the more childhood adversity you have in early life, the more likely you are to die early as well. And that fits in very much with what we know about violence perpetrators, which is not only are they socially isolated, which is a risk factor for early death, but they tend to die, they tend to die early. And these are the types of childhood experience we're talking about. We're talking about abuse. Um, people tend, very understandably, perhaps to focus on sexual abuse. Uh, but sexual abuse is comparatively rare. Much more common is physical abuse and neglect. Um, and neglect is a significant problem uh, which are, um, because of its effect on neuronal development. Household dysfunction, mental illness in the family, an incarcerated relative, mother treated violently, 
substance misuse in the family and divorce. 